Since I last spoke to you on these airways on episode 199, and yes, this is episode 200. So thank God for all of y'all who have been down with your homeboy first and to all of y'all new viewers as well, okay? You're, you're watching on uh, uh, during an, a, a very uh, important time, a very historic time uh, in the history of my company, okay? So thank you for being here for episode 200. But yes, since the last time I spoke to y'all, LeBron Raymond James Sr. has flexed his muscles with my Lakers in two ways. My Los Angeles Lakers <laughs> hired LeBron's podcast mate to be our new head coach. <laughs> and I don't want to hear that bullshit that LeBron said he ain't had nothing to do with. LeBron said he was staying out of the coaching search. Bullshit. Miss me with that LeBron. Miss me with that Rich Paul. Miss me with that Ma uh, Maverick Carter, Nick Wright, all you motherfuckers, Wind Horse, anybody else who's in the LeBron camp who's saying that bullshit, stop it, stop it, stop it. I don't want to hear that. That is nonsensical. That is illogical. We are not stupid. Come on. JJ Reddick, stop it. You don't start. Don't start your Lakers tenure by lying to us. Talking about you and LeBron ain't talk about the job until they offered it to you. Bullshit, JJ. Stop it. Stop it. You're already facing motherfuckers like me not liking your motherfucking ass from the Duke days now. We already trying to get past that. And I was trying to get your ass the benefit of the doubt. Then you want to fucking lie to me. Stop it. So that was one way LeBron flexed his muscle. And then, of course, just the other day, he flexed it again by getting my Lakers to draft his oldest boy, LeBron James Jr., a.k.a. Bronny James. Now, Let's start with the JJ shit. Let's start there and then we'll move to, to Bronny. Okay. I do believe that LeBron James, given his stature in the NBA, given what he means to the NBA, given what he means to my Los Angeles Lakers, he should be able to influence who the coach is. I do believe that. I do believe that. Uh, I hate that he and his camp try to cap like he doesn't do shit like that. But I do think he should have the right to do it and just fucking own it here. Just own it. Uh, once I heard the news, I went and watched every episode of his podcast, Mind the Game with J.J. Reddick. I didn't watch that shit beforehand. I didn't want to watch that shit. Okay, I didn't. The clips that I was seeing that I was seeing on social media kind of didn't do the pod justice. Okay. And so I am glad I did go and watch it. Aside from J.J. being our coach now, I'm glad that I watched it because, again, I see that these motherfuckers that go out there and do that clip shit they're so uh, uh, sensational, uh, sensationalistic. They're so on on this yellow press shit. Do y'all know the clip that came out where Brun was basically implying that they lost in 2011 because? The roster wasn't right. Folks took that clip out, but what they didn't take out is LeBron blamed himself for, for them losing. And that JJ blamed LeBron for them losing. You know what I'm saying? Like, JJ basically, you know, if you had did this, and LeBron was like, yeah, if I had just played like I played, 
in the conference finals, we win. Bron said, I played like shit. They didn't clip that and put that out. You feel me? See, so so the part that they put out made me feel like, man, what the fuck? This just this podcast is some bullshit with Bron for be up here lying. And it, and, it, and it really wasn't that. It was really some <laughs> basketball nerd shit, particularly if you like offensive basketball. This was some of the nerdiest shit, okay? I know my partner, Anthony Carlisle, who was an offensive wizard on the high school level. I know that motherfucker loved that shit because Bron is his favorite player, uh, and he is an offensive mastermind, so... Bron and JJ up there talking about all these goddamn sets out of horn and out of flex and five valve and flare screens and rip screens and all this kind of shit. Oh, I know my boy was goddamn it loving it. Every minute of it, he was loving it. So I wanted to watch it to see. What is my future coach like? I never had an opportunity to do this. The Lakers had a lot of coaching there. See, I went over there to the Lakers with Phil Jackson. I'm a childhood Michael Jordan fan. Okay. We left the Bulls, said fuck the Bulls when they broke the Bulls up. Jerry Krause, Jerry Ryan's door broke my motherfucking heart. I said fuck them motherfuckers. Fuck them. And I left the Bulls. And when Phil got the job with the Lakers in 1999, 2000, that season, I went over and over there to the Lakers. It made perfect sense. They they ran the triangle, Kobe Bean Bryant's game, Mimic Mike's. It was beautiful to watch. And, of course, they had Shaq. But with Phil and Kobe there, it was great. It was like I was watching Mike again. But outside of Phil, we had a lot of coaches. Yeah, we have. And I haven't really gotten this chance to look at uh, a coach and hear from a coach and see how this coach thinks like I just did with this mind the game shit. I know what J.J. thinks about the two-for-one situations. I know what J.J. thinks about you know, being up three late in the game, do you foul or do you just play it out? I know he likes to – he say he's going to foul every time. That's what I should expect when I watch the games. You know, I know he loves – he was a three-point shooter, but I know he really buys into that philosophy and those analytics and all that kind of shit. He's going to want my Lakers shooting threes and threes and threes and threes and threes. I know all this shit. As some said, this was like the longest coaching interview of all time. So it was good to get a good feel for him. It let me know that he does know his shit, at least offensively. They talked about defense here and there, you know, how to stop some of these actions that they were drawing up. Uh, but it seems like he's going to need a good defensive guy on his staff. What gives me pause is still the man ain't coach nobody but some fourth graders. <laughs> still. And sat here, ain't you no know, discuss ball with another nerdy motherfucker, bro. You got to be able to do more than that to coach the other guys on that team and to develop the other guys on that team and to motivate the other guys on that team and get them to play defense and get them to buy into their role and all that kind of shit. So I am worried about that. I'm very worried about that. Okay? Very much so. Uh, but Brun being the powerful motherfucker he is. And, 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 can't leave this out. I'm the realest. Gotta be 100. And my Lakers being an organization that depends on Lakers money. See, the Clippers don't depend on the Clippers owner, Bomber, he doesn't depend on Clippers money. Now, most of the owners in the you know, these sports owners, whether it be 
NFL, NBA, MLB. They, most of the owners don't depend on their sports money for their money. The, the the sports teams are their side things. You know what I'm talking about? That's just what they goddamn do for to, to fuck off. You know what I'm talking about? And to really to get some fame and shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? That's just like, that, that, that's they play shit. Not for the Lakers. The Lakers is what they you know. That's the family business. So I'm telling y'all, some of the shit we do don't be to win a fucking championship. That should be to stay relevant, win the headline, win the news cycle. And hope that you win a championship in the midst of this shit. I don't like it. As a fan, I don't like it. I'm gonna watch my Lakers regardless. You ain't gotta do no pretty shit or no interesting shit to get me to watch. I'm gonna watch. I wanna win. I don't want motherfuckers texting my phone when we lose. I hate that shit. It's calmed down some having LeBron on the team because some of these very folks who would text my phone and all this shit trolling me. Are LeBron fans. So they don't do that as much since we be losing with his ass on the team. But I want to win. And it's going to take more than J.J. Reddick being up here on this nerdy shit and being able to draw up some good, good sets to get us to win. But LeBron liked him. Ownership felt like we need to do what's necessary to keep LeBron. LeBron sells these tickets. He sells these jerseys. He keeps us relevant right now. We're going to do what he wants us to do. Motherfucker powerful, man. Let's move to Bronny. Let's move to Bronny. Okay. People calling it nepotism that my leg is drafted LeBron James Jr. It is nepotism. It's undoubtedly nepotism. Again, LeBron James Kemp, Rich Paul. I saw somebody say that Rich Paul said if if, if uh, Bronny's name was uh, John Smith, that he still would have got drafted. Something to that effect. Let me double check. I don't want to. I don't want to misquote. Gentlemen, okay. I'm gonna make sure I'm thorough. Whatever it was, it was total bullshit. Now, I'm gonna tell you that off top. I'm gonna tell you that right now, Jack. And it was bullshit. All right, yeah. Now, this is based uh on a report by TMZ. It says Rich Paul says Bronny would be in the NBA even if his name was John Smith. Now, come on, man. That's bullshit. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it now. Okay. Uh, Bronny was a McDonald's All-American. I didn't keep up with his high school career like that to know if that was justified or not. Okay. But when it comes to what Bronny did in college as a freshman, we got to stop. Okay. As a freshman, in his one year in college, Bronny averaged 4.8 points, 2.1 assists, 2.8 rebounds, 0.8 steals on a bad team. You feel me? It, it ain't like you're on a good team and you're, 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 you're one of these stacked. You're on UConn. And your numbers don't look good because y'all just so motherfucking talented and, you know, to my, uh, uh, you just playing your role and doing you. No, this team was trash. And that was that King put up. Now, I did not rip Brunny all year for those numbers because the young King suffered cardiac arrest. That young King, Brun almost had a tragedy. Brun almost had a tragedy. You know, like, I look at the guys who, who the league was theirs. And you can go back sometime. You go back to Magic. Career cut short because of HIV. Weird shit. Mike, his father gets murdered. That shit leads to him retiring. 
in right there in his prime, three championships in a row. He he the shit. You know what I'm saying? Perennial MVP candidate, perennial defense player of the year candidate. Like motherfucker retires at the top of his powers. Cause his father gets murdered. That's some weird shit. That that occurrence was some weird shit. Kobe with the rape case. Weird shit. And then you go to Braun. He gets the baton. And ain't no weird shit happened with Braun. Ain't no weird shit happened with Braun. No, his decision. Folks didn't like it, but that wasn't just weird. If that man's son would have died, we might be looking at some different shit. Braun might have went ahead and got damn retired. And say fuck this shit. I'm finna go home to Savannah, go home to Bryce, go ahead, uh, go home to my little girl. Hey, I, man, y'all can have this shit. That's what that man might have done. You know what I'm saying? So it's a blessing that that man's son still here. You understand know I me? Mean? So I ain't ripped that kid for those numbers because he ain't have like. I'm assuming he couldn't do shit like to work on his game leading up to, you know, uh, college. Okay. So I ain't ripping for that. But we also know this. The world don't be giving a fuck about none of the shit I just said. They don't. There's a lot of kids out here who go through a lot of shit and probably have promise, but because of whatever happened health-wise, family-wise, whatever, they don't get that shot. Bronny still got this shot because his dad is LeBron James. Bronny still got that shot because his dad is the most powerful athlete of all time. You feel me? It is. And, and, and Bron ain't the only motherfucker in the league that's even flexing this kind of muscle. Okay. So when I call him the most powerful athlete of all time, it's a totality. I'm, 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 I'm taking everything into account. Because we just see, I mean, we can look over there to uh, Milwaukee and see what Young is doing with his brother being on the roster. You feel me? Or we can look and see how, uh, if you if you look at just other instances, but maybe like former players whose sons get a shot. You know, they get a shot. But maybe you would think they wouldn't get a shot, and they get a shot. You know. Maybe not even on the NBA level. Look at some of these camps. Take Steph, for instance. Steph is one of the ones there. But where Steph was as a young Steph, I'm talking about pre-college Steph, would Steph have been able to be in some of these elite camps if his daddy wasn't Dale Curry? And I bet you can say that about so many guys. You know, and so th that's just a thing. Nepotism is a thing in American society. You know what I'm talking about? The BT Awards was just on. Lauren Hill was on stage and her son was on stage with her. Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill is the motherfucking icon. Her son got to get up there because of her. Uh T.I. little daughter performed at the goddamn BT Awards. That's nepotism, dog. Will Smith performed at the BT Awards, but we've seen his two kids perform at various functions and shit. That, that's nepotism. That's what that is. I mean, that's the way of the world. I would say I got my first job because of nepotism. I would say my I got my first teaching job because the principal was one of my mama former students. Now, I went on to be <laughs> one of the greatest teachers of all time. You understand? But uh, I wouldn't have gotten to my foot in the dough if my mama wasn't great. That's nepotism. So I ain't tripping off that. But once again, I say, own it. Just own it. And folks out here on this social media, my God, stop it. Will you take bronze dick up out of your mouth? Y'all got to stop. Y'all know goddamn well this nepotism. It's okay to tell the truth. It's okay. And y'all be feeling y'all like y'all got to defend this man like this your cousin, like this your daddy, like this. Stop it. 
I went viral for a meme I made. And shout out to my little boo thing. I called my little boo thing. I had to run and got drafted. I said, Bay, what's a movie or a show where a character, uh, a, a, a boy finds out that his dad had been cheating on his mama? And she said, I don't know, Bay. Um, um, love and basketball. I said, oh, shit. That's perfect. So I went, found that clip, chopped that bitch up, woo, 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 put it out. I knew what it was going to do. My niece was down here at the time. I told her what it was going to do. That bitch, last time I checked was over. So I don't want to be inaccurate with y'all. So I'll check it right here. Uh, on Facebook, that particular uh, video has done 1.6 million views as I take. And on Instagram, that video has done 1.1 million views. Okay. So 2.7 million views between just those two apps. Okay. Oh, you would think that I didn't call Braun a damn coon or said some fuck shit about him. No, bro, I just made a funny ass meme saying, when Bronny finds out uh Bron been cheating on his mama all these years on the road. Come on, man. And you know, you know that clip where uh Q is confronting his daddy about the cheating and the daddy trying to explain to him about the road and all that kind of shit. If y'all ain't seen it, make sure y'all go check out that meme. It was masterful. Oh. Motherfuckers just got in their feeling. Oh, you hating on a black man. You jealous of a black man. You trying to tear down a black man. Bitch, you know who the fuck I am? You know what I do with black people? What is wrong with you? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. That shit just a joke. That shit just funny. Keep it moving. This is an entertainment business. I'm entertaining folks. I believe LeBron would laugh at that motherfucking me if he saw it. Stop it. Motherfuckers be too in their feelings about these goddamn celebrities and it needs to stop. Needs to stop. Okay? Because LeBron doesn't need that. That man is a billionaire. That man is, is, is the most powerful athlete of all time. Like, Mike couldn't do this. Mike could not do this, y'all. Mike wanted to play for Doug Collins. Okay? Now, the mother coaches that he had, uh, uh, Stan Albeck and Kevin Lockery. Maybe Mike didn't want them. I don't know. I haven't seen how he really felt about them motherfuckers. But Doug Collins. Under Doug Collins, Mike won the MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, scoring title, All-Star Game MVP. That man was goddamn doing his thing. Under Doug Collins. Okay? The Bulls' defense was one of the top-rated defenses in the league already under Doug Collins. They just wasn't getting paid the motherfucking pistol. Okay? Uh, and I would say eventually they still would have got past the Pistons with Doug Collins once Scottie Pippen and Horace Grant had a chance to mature. Jerry Krause said, fuck all that. He wanted that triangle implemented. Uh, Doug Collins would not implement the triangle. Jerry Krause put Phil Jackson on Doug, Doug Collins' uh, uh, staff. He fired Doug Collins eventually. Gave Phil the job. Scott and them eventually. Scott and Horace. Not immediately, but they took a step. But then finally, 91, goddamn, they were ready to roll in. And finally, they sweeped the damn Pistons in 91. After going seven with them in 90. They went on to win the championship in 91, 92, 93. I talked about Mike's pops getting murdered. Mike sits out all in 94. 95, Mike on some 
uh egotistical shit in my opinion come back late season thinking he could just run back up in the league and just take the bitch over no 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 we got a dude named shaquille o'neal in this bitch now nah. you can't just do that mike got motherfucker named penny hardaway in this bitch now nah. can't just do that shit mike they lose in 95 but then 96 got a rebound to witcher dennis robin mike in basketball shape Scotty, undoubtedly Scotty at this point. You win in 96. You win in 97. You win five motherfucking championships. And then the GM tells your coach, coming into the 97, 98 season, I don't give a damn if you go 82 and 0 this your last season. And Mike couldn't do shit about that. Braun got more juice. Braun got juice Mike couldn't think of, bro. Mike could not get his organization to keep a coach who won five championships with him going into the sixth one. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, listen what I'm saying. I know they won six together. What I'm talking about is after the fifth, Jerry Krause didn't even give a fuck and told that man, I don't give a shit what you do next year. You will not be the coach of the Bulls after this season. And already started grooming the next goddamn coach. Man, that's nuts. LeBron would have. Hey, what? LeBron would have had the GM fired. Fucking around with some shit like that. What are we doing? Hell, when Mike went over there to them Wizards, that goddamn owner shit it on Mike. Mike. Mike probably had the Wizards making more money than the Wizards has, have ever motherfucking made from the time they were the Bullets or the goddamn Wizards. And still, that owner, when he was done with Mike, he was done with Mike. Ain't nobody gonna do Brum Brum like that, Jack. Dan Gilbert talked all that shit when Brum left Cleveland that first time. Goddamn, he shut the fuck up and welcomed, welcomed LeBron back to Cleveland that second time and gave LeBron everything he wanted. That boy powerful now. Now, he's standing on the shoulders of giants. He's standing on the shoulders of those who came before him and fought for free agency. He's standing on the shoulders of a Michael Jordan who made the game global. Or, excuse me, he's standing on the shoulders of, 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 uh, of all those who sustained the game as well. The, the guys like Bill Russell, guys like Will Chamberlain, uh, uh, Dr. J, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and of course, Magic and Bird that you got got the league off that tape delay bullshit, and then Jordan taking the game to absolute great heights and making that bitch global with the dream team and with his overall charisma and his greatness and shit like that. Uh standing on the shoulders of Kobe and Shaq and you know these guys, and then coming in and doing what he's done, you know what I'm talking about. Uh he's standing on their shoulders, and that that allows him to be to have some of the power that he has. That's true. But at the end of the day, he got it, man. That man got it. Michael Jordan took a white dude named David Falk and made him the it agent. That boy LeBron and took his partners from the hood and then made them the power players in this motherfucking league. Rich Paul is that shit in that league. You know the rest of them agents mad than the motherfucker that did black man be running shit like this. Bruh made this shit happen. And he got his son on. If, if Giannis gonna be able to get his brother on, you know goddamn well. You know goddamn well my legs is gonna take running. He got the juice. He got the juice. More than anybody, y'all. Clearly more than Mike. More than Ali, I would have to say. Hell, them folks, them boxing organization, they took, they took my boy's licenses. My boy couldn't fight for three and a half years. That's a different time. I don't know if Brun, Brun probably wouldn't have that kind of juice in that time either. Okay. 
So Ali is somebody else whose shoulders he's standing on. Okay. But it is what it is for for this time. Uh, or because of the times that we live in, all things considered, this man got the, got that juice. I'm trying to think of both. Brady. Brady didn't let one lead the Patriots. You saw what Belichick did to his ass. Um, uh, ain't nobody in baseball moving like this. I don't think the baseball boys getting paid. But they ain't got this kind of power. My only blind spot would be soccer. Maybe some of y'all that keep up with soccer maybe can fill me in and say one of these soccer boys got that kind of juice like that. Maybe Messi or Ronaldo or some of these cats moving like that. But on the American stage, it's LeBron Raymond James Sr. And I really don't think it's close. Put it on some. Please subscribe to my daddy's YouTube channel because the more subscribers he gets, the more attractive he looks to sponsors. The more attractive he looks to sponsors, the more money he can make. And the more money he can make, the more money he can spend on me.